There are some tales we tell again and again, generation after generation. They ring true regardless of the times we live in and tap into the deepest recesses of our humanity. Often, they also tap into our deepest fears. In this spirit, we bring you our show, Fireside Fairy Tales. We'd like to take you on a trip through some of those fairy tales of yore, spiced up with a bit of our signature fireside style. So get ready to get your Hans dirty with these grim stories, listeners. And speaking of grim, our first installment in this series is based on the Juniper Tree by those very brothers Grimm. And it is very much about keeping it all in the family. We call our version Lorna Tree. Fireside Fairy Tales was taped live in New York City on Sunday, May 26, 2019. Where have you been? Why are you hiding under Lorna Tree? Oh, I just needed a bit of shade from that big old sun, Miss Marley, and I thought I'd say hi to Lorna while I was here. Well, come over and help us cut the cake. I blew out all the candles. Look, Grandpa, look. See over there? (laughs) Oh, man, you certainly did, didn't you? So I suppose that means you'll be getting your wish, eh, Marley? What a lucky birthday girl you are. Will my wish really come true, Grandpa? Does that actually work, or is it just a silly story? Oh, there's no such thing as a silly story, Marley. All stories have at least some element of truth in them. So if I wished... if I wish for... I'm not supposed to tell, though, right? Oh, usually not. But I think if it's someone you really, really trust, someone, you know, won't tell anyone else in the world, it makes the secret even more likely to come true. Because of what you want and believe in, you wish together, don't you think? Yeah, I like that. So can I tell you what I wished? You would trust me with that responsibility? Hmm, how do you know I won't blab? Look how loose my lips are. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Grandpa, I trust you. And I really want to tell... Tell someone anyway. I can't tell Mommy or Dad. It's too... Marley? Are you okay? Come here. Come here and sit down and tell me all about this wish of yours. No birthday wish should have you so long in the face. (laughs) No, I prefer your face nice and round and pink, just like this. (laughs) That tickles. Okay, okay, I'll tell. Super duper secret, though, right? Super duper secret mode, I swear. I wished... I wish that maybe Marcus could come to my party, just for today. Ah, well, yes, that's a difficult one. Uh, Do you think it will come true? Well, uh... If we both wish for it really, really hard... Marley, I... Don't you wish he was here too, Grandpa? Oh, of course, of course I do, sweetheart. More than you could possibly know. Maybe I should tell Mommy and Daddy too, and they can help wish. No, 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 I, I think it's best if we do just keep this to ourselves. You you know, to make sure the magic isn't spread too thin. Who knows what will happen? I just want to see him just for a minute. Wish really hard and keep your eyes open, Marley. Maybe you'll see him somewhere you don't expect. Now, go get some of your cake before the birthday girl is left without a big icing flower slice. The biggest flower is mine. Mommy is saving it. Love you. Bye, Grandpa. Bye, Lorna Tree. Love you, Marley. More than you can know. Everything okay over here, Dad? You've been warming that bench for some time now. Oh, just staying out of the way, Dennis. I know better than to butt in. (laughs) Too many cooks, you know, don't want to upset the chef. (laughs) Come on, Dad. I'm supposed to blame my social anxiety on you, not the other way around. It's not you I'm talking about. Ah, I see. Where is Elizabeth, anyway? Where else? In her office. On Marley's birthday? 
You'd think she could put down work long enough to celebrate her own daughter. Dad. I understand if she doesn't have time for those of us who aren't blood-related, but Dad. couldn't be bothered to help look for Marcus when he went missing. I noticed... Dad, cut it out. Now. <sighs> sorry. Sorry, I'm sorry. That's completely out of line. I'm sorry. It's just... Marley was talking about Marcus. She was? Oh. What was she saying about him? He was her wish when she blew out the candles that she could see him today for her birthday. Oh, man. She misses her big brother, Dennis, and I think she still blames herself. I really thought we were finally making a breakthrough with her therapist. All the night terrors seem to have stopped, and she's talking to us all again. It's better, I know, but do you think... You think you can really recover from a shock like that? And at such a young age... She's ten today, Dad. She understands what loss is. We've gone through at least four goldfish. The death of a goldfish and the sudden disappearance of your half-brother are not at all the same. I know. I know that better than anyone. Don't you think I know, Dad? He was... He is my son. My first child. I didn't think anything could hurt as badly as when I lost Lorna, but this... This is beyond me. And at least I could help you bear that grief after Lorna passed. The death of a spouse, well, that's something I understand. So I could help you through when she died. Your mother left us years ago, and I still grieve. And the death of a parent, that's something I know too. Even losing a sibling, both your aunts passed away long ago. But for a parent to lose a child... It's unnatural. It's not the way of things. For a child to go before You the... don't know that he's dead. They never confirmed it. All right, right, of course, I I'm sorry. Just because he's missing doesn't mean that he's... I, he's... I know, son, I know, I know. I, I misspoke. It's just, it's just, it's been such a heavy loss. It feels like a death to me, e even now. E even more so now, after all this time. A year isn't so long. Not when Marcus had, has a whole lifetime ahead, wherever he is. No, no, not so long indeed. Uh, all the time in the world for him to return to us safe. Thank goodness Lorna didn't have to go through this. It's the one blessing. <laughs> A small blessing, no doubt. You think she's still watching, though? No, oh, undoubtedly. Whenever I look at this old willow she's buried under, it seems to be weeping even more these days. Well, since Marcus disappeared. <laughs> yeah, it, it does seem extra droopy, doesn't it? Still provides the sweetest shade for miles around. Ah, <sighs> poor Lorna. <laughs> Marcus looked the spitting image of her. Yeah, it's true. He looks just like her. It wasn't a dry eye at the candlelight vigil we held in his honor. <sighs> Maybe that's why Elizabeth didn't show her face, couldn't fake the tears. Okay, come off it, Dad. Elizabeth loved Marcus. It destroyed her when he... I don't think she could have wept more had Marley been the one who'd gone missing. I can't think of Marley missing, too. Could hardly imagine it. Marley blames herself because she's here and Marcus isn't. As if it could be her fault somehow. She thinks that I blame her. But how could I? It was a freak incident. People disappear every day. They do. It's, it's just a fact of life. <laughs> that doesn't make it okay, son. Especially when it torments that sweet young girl every day. <laughs> Not today, at least. Today, finally she can smile. But maybe her wish will come true in some fashion. I mean, after all, if Marcus is thinking of her on her special day and sending her love and peace... Come on, Dad, let's rejoin the party, eh? For Marley to keep smiling, I can put one on myself. And I think I see a few pieces of cake left. Okay. <laughs> Asleep yet, birthday girl? No, I waited on you. For a good night. Oh, there's my good girl. I'll tuck you in nice and tight. One for each year. Tuck, 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 tuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy you're here, Mama. Oh, I know, sweetheart, I know. I hate it too, but the pollen from that tree in the backyard just does me in every time. I just can't be out and around it. You know that. I know. You have an allergy. 
It makes you feel bad. An allergy, yes. It makes me just downright sick, and I don't want to get sick because I want to stay safe and sound and healthy to be here with you. You don't want me to get sick, do you? No. Don't get sick and go away, too. No, no, no. That's all right. I'm not going anywhere. That's why we had our special breakfast, and I told you I'd be here before you slip away to dreamland, and here I am. Ta-da! But you missed such a fun party. No, I was there. I watched you from the window. Well, you were plenty occupied with your friends. I would have played with you, too. Oh, such a sweet girl. You didn't see me blow out the candles. I saw you. I wished... I wished he would come back. Just for today. Marley. I'm telling you because I know he won't now. It's too late. It's bedtime. Sweetheart, you know that isn't how it works. People don't just come back when they're gone. It was just... I thought I could say sorry. He knows that you're sorry, Marley. He knows that you didn't mean to... to hurt him like that. He does? He does. He forgives you, I promise. Do you think he's with his mommy now? Yes. He and Lorna are right where they belong. Together. I guess that's good, right? Exactly. Marcus came from Lorna. She was his mommy. And a child should be with his mommy. Not another mommy, right? Right. No matter how much we loved Marcus, he just didn't belong with us, you see? I guess. You and me and Daddy, we belong together. And now Marcus and his mommy can be together too. Everyone is where they belong. I know, but... That's why we buried him under the tree with Lorna, remember? So they can be together here and in heaven. We took care of them the best we could. I had hives for days from being under that awful willow tree for so long. I just wish... I wish it hadn't been me, that it wasn't my fault. You didn't mean to. Just remember, it was an accident. You didn't mean to hurt him. He forgives you. I forgive you, baby. But Daddy... Daddy will never know because we'll never tell him, right? It's our secret, so Daddy will never be mad at you. I know. Mommy, I can't stop seeing his face... So blue. Marley, Marley, don't be morbid. He just kept staring at me. He couldn't breathe. The, the cookie I gave him, it was stuck in his throat. That's enough, Marley. He couldn't even scream. His eyes were screaming, but he couldn't even make a sound. That's enough. Marley, sweetheart, it was an accident. Little boys die every day from accidents. They're careless and foolish. He probably ate the cookie too fast. That's why he choked. It isn't your fault. You couldn't save him, okay? I guess. I know you tried, didn't you? Yes, but I didn't know how. And that's not your fault. You're a big girl, but no one could expect you to save him, even though it would make Daddy very sad. I know. So let's put it away and not speak of it again, okay? Let Lorna and Marcus rest together in peace. You and I made sure that they are together under Lorna's tree. No need for Daddy to know. I'll protect you and our secret. Okay. I love you, Mommy. I love you too, sweetheart. My sweet Marley. I'd do anything for you. You know that, don't you? I know. Sweet, sweet dreams, Angel. All rainbows and flowers and bunnies, okay? (laughs) I'll do my best, Mommy. Good night. Night, night. I understand why you didn't come today, Marcus. I know you're with your mommy now, but I just wanted to say I'm sorry. I didn't mean for you to die, and I miss you. I miss you so much. Please don't be angry with me. I love you. I just wish that my wish could come true. That just for today, I could see you.
wish that I could see you, Marcus. Marley. Marley. Marcus, is that you? Where are you? Where... where am I? I know this spot. This is the forest path where... where Marcus... where it happened. Oh, no, no. I don't want to be here. I've got to get away. Marley. 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 I have to get out of here. I have to... Wait. That tree. That doesn't belong here. That's... That's Lorna's tree. Marley. Who is that? Who's there? I don't recognize the voice, but it's still so... Familiar somehow. Oh, look at that beautiful bird in Lorna's tree. Beautiful, golden, like an angel. Oh, wait, bird, come back. Where are you going? Slow down. I'm coming. I'm coming. Did you lead me? Up ahead. <laughs> ahead, a clearing. I can see the light shining in. It almost looks like it's glowing. Marley. 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 Come see. Come see me. Marcus. Marcus, is that you? Did my wish come true? There's no one here in the clearing. Except I feel eyes on me. Marley, watch and see. The light. What's happening? Come on, Marley, catch up. Marcus, you came. My wish came true. I... Come on, Slowpoke, hurry up. Marcus, I'm right here. I... Ah, there you are, finally. Come here and give me a snack already. I'm starving. Wait. It can't be. It's Marcus and me when we... When he... Mm -hmm. Cookie Monster time. Nom, 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 nom. Give it here. <laughs> no. Don't give it to him. Stop. Mm, so good. So tasty. Nom, 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 nom. Don't you stand there. <laughs> Save him. Save him. Marcus. Who's that there? Oh, it's Daddy and Mommy. And... Oh, the police officer who came to the house. What do you mean you didn't find anything? He's missing. The young boy is missing. Do you understand me? I'm sorry, sir, but there's nothing more we can do right now. Why do I even pay taxes? Did you even try? Did you do anything? Oh, Daddy, no, you don't understand. It isn't that man's fault. Calm down, Dennis. Try to calm down. I I'm sure they're doing everything they can. Right, officer? Yeah, absolutely, ma'am. We've got officers scouting the region and an APB out on the wire. If anyone can find your son, ma'am, it's us. He's my stepson, actually. Marcus is Dennis's son. Oh, okay then. Sorry. I just can't believe he's... Did, did he run away? Did, did someone take him? I mean, for God's sakes, we know nothing. Nothing at all. Except that I know. I know. I'll keep you updated with any news I hear, sir. I promise. Your son couldn't have gone far. I'm sure he's close by. Yes, dear. I I'm sure he's much closer than we think. Oh, my boy. Marcus, my boy. Daddy, I'm sorry. It's the tree. The Lorna tree. And Mommy and me. I, I don't want to see. Hurry up, Marley. Hurry up. I, I want to get away from this tree. <laughs> oh, it itches. We went out there to Lorna tree, even though it made Mommy sick. She wanted to help me bury Marcus with Lorna under the tree. It's all going to be fine, Marley. See? Daddy's inside with Grandpa. They'll be asleep now. <coughs> you did the right thing coming to tell me. Not even Daddy or Grandpa can know, you hear? It will hurt them too much, and they will be too angry. I forgive you, and I know Marcus forgives you too. But Daddy, I, I'm not sure that he could forgive you, sweetie. Do you understand why we need to stay quiet? <coughs> this tree. 
tree. <laughs> I still haven't told mommy, but it hurts to keep it in. It hurts me so much. I'll protect you, Marley. No one needs to know that it's your fault that Marcus died. No one will know but you and me. I'll protect you. Just you and me. <coughs> Come on, let's get away from the tree. <coughs> I can't take it anymore. <coughs> Bakery? Hello? Anyone back there? Ah, hello. I have that order ready for you, Elizabeth, just like you asked. Great, great. Perfect timing. I want to get home with these cookies before the kids get back. Well, they'll be excited, I'm sure. Now, just remember, in case they have any friends over or anything, there are peanuts and peanut oil in the cookie mix. Oh, I know, I know. What? But Marcus had a peanut allergy. Why, he shouldn't have had that cookie at all. <laughs> I'm sure you're aware, but it's a liability. Kids and their allergies these days. Especially these nut allergies, you know? I saw a news story. One kid took a bite and blew right up like a balloon. Couldn't breathe at all. <laughs> Can't be too careful. But Mommy gave me those cookies to take on our hike to share. They made him sick. She knew it would make him sick. I'm all too aware. And believe me, I'll be very, very careful. She knew. She knew. <laughs> Marley, the tree, my tree, the Lorna tree. The tree? Remember me, the tree. I'll remember Marcus. I'll remember you and the tree. It's beautiful out here, Marley. What a lovely thought. A mother-daughter picnic. Yes, Mommy. Just you and me. And you even packed our lunch for us? How grown up you are. So we've got sandwiches, fruit, ooh, and this tea. Did you really make the tea yourself? Yes, Mommy. I made it very carefully. Just for you. Well, how did you ever find this lovely little clearing? Marcus showed it to me. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm, something in my throat. Um, Marcus showed it to you? When? For my birthday. I got my wish. He visited me. Now, Marley, we talked about this. Please, just... <coughs> just, just let it go. You need to let Marcus go. He showed me. He and Lorna, they showed me everything. What are you talking about? Marley. Marley. That golden bird, it's, it's staring at me. <laughs> it isn't my fault that he's gone, Mommy. Marcus forgives me, and so does Lorna. <laughs> what, what is... <laughs> I can't... Marley, what is going on? You knew all about Marcus's allergy. But you gave me those cookies to share with him anyway. Knowing what it would do. Knowing it would be just him and me. Uh, Marley, I... Marcus I, wasn't the only one with an allergy, Mommy. Uh, Lorna, tree. I made the tea all by myself, Mommy. With a little help from Marcus. And the leaves from the Lorna tree. <laughs> Mar Marley, uh, help me. It will be our little secret. Just you and me, Mommy. You and me and Marcus and Lorna and the tree. <laughs> And that was our fireside fairy tale, Lorna Tree. The cast featured in this episode includes Mary Murphy as Marley, David Linton as Grandpa, James Reeser as Dennis, Michael Pate as Marcus, Casey LaForest as Lorna, 
James Kleinman as the policeman, Alan LaForest as the baker, and the part of Elizabeth was played by me, Ali Silva. Lorna Tree was written by Courtney Gillian Cholovich and directed by Holly Payne Strange. Our live show and podcast are produced by Gustavo Rodriguez and me for Fireside Mystery Productions. Our musical score is improvised and performed by Nico Slater. Our sound effects designer and engineer is Greg Russ. Technical director at The Slipper Room is Johnny Goddard. Our production assistant is Brontus Shane Orengo. Jason Graves composed our theme music. And I manage our audio post-production. Just as those tale tellers and yarn spinners of yore, we, the small band of storytellers and history makers of Fireside Mystery Theater, work very hard to bring you deliciously dark and delightful audio entertainment. But we do need your help to sustain this eerily wonderful thing we love and to enable our Fireside Flames to grow. Consider becoming a Patreon patron of the show. For a dollar or two or more a month, you could provide vital support for what we do and you'd help us achieve our future goals. Not only will your patronage garner our undying gratitude, we've got some special perks for it too. A postcard from Sunken Harbor, exclusive discounts on our merch, a personalized audio thank you from a cast member, a sweet limited edition lapel pin, a podcast shout out, exclusive content. There are fantastic rewards for all different monthly sustainer levels. Become an FMT Patreon patron today by going to patreon.com slash fireside mystery theater. Or just follow the link from our website. Dearest listeners, we are ever so grateful for any support you give to help us keep the embers of our fireside flickering. If you're not already subscribed to this podcast, I suggest you remedy that immediately. It's ever so easy, just as it is easy to leave us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. And if you are Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook inclined, do be sure to follow us at Fireside Mystery. We'd love to hear from you. Sunday, September 29th at 5 p.m. Sounds like a very important date, doesn't it? Because it is. Don't miss the first live podcast taping of our brand new Fireside Mystery Theater season. Again, that Sunday, September 29th at 5 p.m. at New York City's own palace of variety, The Slipper Room. Tickets available soon at slipperroom.com or via the links on our website. Coming up next from Fireside Mystery Theater, a famously fishy fable gets the fireside treatment with our story, Just a Quiet Girl. More fireside fairy tales await you, dear listeners, for story time, for bedtime, for any time. But whatever time it may be, we do urge you to mind the shadows. 